Hey guys, it's Tom, and uh, believe it or not, I'm back again with another comic book haul. Seems like I just shot one um, the other day, and my Baltimore Comic Con stuff, and I didn't think I was going to do another video um, until closer to Thanksgiving, but uh, I hit up the flea market on back-to-back -back weekends, and uh, I found some pretty cool stuff. Um, I think everything that I'm about to show were dollar books, um, but there's some really cool things. Um, I'll start off with the books that I found down English Town Flea Market, and I've said this many times. Uh, I've not really been lucky in, in English Town. Um, for lack of a better description, English Town Flea Market's like a glorified bad yard sale. Um, I go there if I don't, like I said, if I don't have a lot of money to spend and uh, I just want to, you know, look around and satisfy the, the itch to, to dig for stuff. But I think I did pretty good. Um, I've always liked the artwork on this. Um, Jim Silk's uh, Rascals in Paradise. I got part one, part two... And part three, uh, these were a buck a piece, magazine format. I read issue one so far. Um, if you're a Dave Stevens fan, I think you would like Jim Silk's work. Um, part one wasn't the greatest uh, story, but the artwork is just absolutely phenomenal. Uh, I'll just give you guys a quick glimpse at some of the artwork um see if i can find a splash page or something that's really good it's kind of adam hughes meets dave stevens um obviously i think jim silk was around before adam hughes and he actually thanks dave stevens in the foreword to these books um so if, if you want to check out some interesting artwork, um, just look up Jim Silk's uh, work. So those were a buck a piece. I also found this um, for a dollar. It's in really nice shape. It's a, a Betty Page book, and I'm a big Betty Page fan. And um, I'm not a He-Man fan by any stretch i kind of missed that whole timeline um growing up i guess it was right at the age where i wasn't really into saturday morning cartoons and toys anymore um, but i did find this it was in it's in really high grade shape um he man uh masters of the universe activity book by golden it's not been, you know, written or, or colored in. Um, the cover's in really nice shape. Uh, it's a wraparound cover, but it's the same image on the front and the back. And it is from 1983. Just you can see here. Ah, I missed a page. So I guess somebody did color something in it and cut it out. But the rest of the book... Seems, well, maybe something here or there. I didn't look really good, really well through this um, at first glance. Um, but it was only a dollar, and uh, I don't have a lot of He-Man stuff in my collection. So I figured that was uh, a nice little pickup for a buck. All right. Same day, different vendor. Some other dollar finds. Amazing Spider-Man 265, second print. First, uh, Silver Sable. X-Men 119 for a dollar. I don't have a lot of X-Men in the collection. And then, uh, Amazing Spider-Man 365. I've got a couple of copies out already, but that's the first appearance of uh, Spider-Man 2099. This is a book that every time I see it, um, it's always beat 
really, really beat. The spine's always wrecked on it. Um, and it's a modern book, um, but for some reason, I always find it in low grade. Um, Ghost Rider, one of six. Um, Clayton Crane cover. I mean, it doesn't have a lot of value that I'm aware of. Um, if I see Clayton Crane again, I'll, I'll get him to sign that. He has this cool uh, rainbow effect that he does with his, with his pens for an extra five bucks. I think I'm going to do that if I ever see him again. This is a book that was hot for a, a minute. I uh, found two copies of this, Avengers 227. We got the uh, direct edition and the newsstand. It's when uh, um, Captain Marvel joins the Avengers. This was a book that seemed out of place when I was looking through his boxes because this is a relatively new release. Pick that up for a buck. And then this is a book that uh, I looked up on the Key Collector app. And uh, they had it listed as a, a $14, $15 book. Venom number 14. It's a Clayton Crane cover. So I was very happy to find those books for a dollar. Oh, one other book that I found um, in his boxes for a dollar. And uh, the Mylar alone is worth a dollar. But uh, got a lower grade um, Detective 398 for one dollar. Anytime I can get an early Bronze Age Batman in respectable grade that I don't have, I'm going to grab that all day, every day. So on Friday, uh, today's Sunday, um, football Sunday, uh, I went to Columbus Flea Market. It was cold. There wasn't a lot of vendors there. Um, I found two guys that had comics. Um, first guy, um, he had one random box of comics, and I bought the best three books that he had. Uh, that there, These were a buck apiece. Uh, Marvel Tales 44, just a, a reprint of a Spider-Man, Silver Age Spider-Man. Um... Defenders 36, needed it for my run. Lucky that I didn't have it because I was doing it from memory. And uh, mid-grade Strange Tales 172. He also had, in really bad shape, um, the first meeting between Blade and uh, Morbius. Um, but the spine was... It's like somebody jammed the book, you know, carelessly into the box and it got caught and ripped. Um, that that's too bad. That would have been a nice uh, upgrade for me. So then I found another guy. Oh, going back to um, to English Town Flea Market. I'm sorry, I missed a couple of other books. I just wanted to to show you before I show you the the rest of the the Columbus one. Found this for a dollar. Magnus Robot Fighter number one. It also had all these cards on the back. Um, if anybody's familiar with these cards that can educate me, uh, let me know. But that was a buck. Spider-Man 2099 uh, for a dollar. And then I found two copies of Punisher number one from the ongoing series. So we got number one. And uh, we got a newsstand as well as the direct edition. So not bad for a dollar. It was from the same guy. I think it was from the same guy that I bought the uh, Betty Page stuff from. And then to round up my trip to English Town, always liked this cover. It's got a lot, of, lot going on. Spawn number two for a dollar. And behind and on the other side of it was Spawn number one for a dollar. That's like my fourth or fifth copy of Spawn number one. Still don't have a newsstand in the collection. And then also at English Town, um, a couple of videos back, uh, I showed that I picked up a Lone Ranger and Butch Cavendish, uh, Butch Cassidy, I think is his name, figure and the, the, the horse, Silver. Well, I found this for $5. And... Um, his foot's broken, but I'm sure on eBay I can find a beater um, figure, you know, that doesn't have the outfit. Uh, I mean, the clothes alone are probably worth like 30 bucks, and they're in really good shape. 
And of course, I got just one shoe, so I'll probably have to find another shoe down the road. Um, but uh, for five bucks, that, that was going to be a no-brainer for me. I had that whole set when I was a kid. Now, <clears throat> going back to the Columbus Flea Market, like I said, there wasn't uh, many people there. And I did find two dealers with comics. And um, found a second guy. He had a bunch of... He had one box on his table. All independent stuff. But then he said, I have some other boxes in my car. And it was all X-Men stuff that I don't know much about. But he did have a couple other boxes with some random books in it. And they were all a buck a piece. Uh, Spider-Man Unlimited number one. Got two copies of that. Amazing Spider-Man Direct Edition, number 360. First uh, cameo of Carnage. And the newsstand. And then, I don't know how I keep doing this. Um, he had a couple of copies of this. And I was too busy, so busy looking at the spines of them that I didn't notice that. I, I God, I God is my witness. I don't know how I, I do keep doing this almost every video. So that's garbage. But I did get a nice clean copy of uh, Marvel Age number six. So he had a whole box full of Marvel Age books, um, and they were all buck a piece. So I think uh, with that statement, I think you have an idea where we're going. And then I found Marvel Age number twelve, um, the cameo of the. Uh, symbiote costume. Alright. So. In addition to those books. We found. Not one. Not two. Not three. Not four. Not five. Not six. But seven copies of Marvel Age 41. There was also two other copies. Oh, I had a total of nine copies. And uh, the guy goes, um, I'd like to take two of those back. Um, I guess he obviously knew something was up for me to buy nine copies of uh, this random Marvel Age book. They're all in respectable shape. Uh, 8.590, maybe a 9.2. Um, no creases on them. They just, you know, they're a little yellow. Um, but other than that, uh, you know, a year ago, I would have been sitting pretty with these. These were like a $100 bill at one point. So that's all the comics that I've picked up. Um, I did go with my wife shopping yesterday to a place called the Christmas Tree Shop. Um, and I saw this there these uh, Hot Wheels Batman cars. I only wanted it for the uh, the vintage uh, Batmobile, the 1966 Batmobile. I think I might, if I open these, and I think I'm going to, I'm going to give the rest of the cars to my nephew. Um, but uh, I wanted that 1966 Batmobile. And it was only five bucks, four ninety seven. All right. Um, I also picked up some baseball cards at the flea market let me see so if you're not into baseball cards this is the type of the time of the video where you can just shut it down and uh thanks for watching if uh you're tuning out uh, like i said it was a small haul um i just wanted to film this before the black friday stuff that was coming up but like i said i got some baseball cards um at the flea market i got the uh, dd gregorius rookie for 50 cents And uh, another DD for 50. And then um, I got a Paul O'Neill jersey card. I got uh, Aaron Hicks rookie card. I guess if you haven't told, I'm a Yankee fan. And Glaber Torres's rookie card. So I got the last three cards for a total of $12. He, he cut me a deal on those. Baseball cards are really not worth what they used to be back in the day. So I think if you were used to collect baseball cards and you kind of want to get back into it, now's the time to do it because the market, for the most part, is dead. Um, I mean, you could pick up stuff on the cheap 
all the time. Um, I also picked up these random boxes. Uh, I was at Five Below the other day and picked this up. It is 100 cards, two packs, one rookie card, one Hall of Fame card, five cards from each of the past decades, and a storage cube. And there was about 20 of these boxes, and every box had a Fred Lynn card of, of some form or another, which I thought was interesting. So I peel this off, and it's probably a bunch of 80s and 90s junk. Um, but I wanted to check them out and see what we got. So just peel that off. And we'll just open these on camera, I hope. If I can figure out how to get this stupid cube open. Oh, it's stuck. Why is it stuck? I do not know. Give me one second because I don't want to knock the camera over. Here we go. All right. So there's a pack of uh, 2018 tops that has 10 cards in the pack. And then 1993 Opeachy. You know that's going to be garbage. All right. So let's see. Fred Lynn. Jared Weaver. That's a Roger Clemens. So there's our... There's, I mean, he's not a Hall of Famer. I don't know if he'll ever get in, but he, he should be. Um, Dale Murphy. Marcus Simeon. Stephen Vogt. Aaron Sanchez. What year are these? These are 2017 tops. Brandon Phillips and Junior Guerrera. All right. And then these are all every other way. I'd be very surprised if there's anything of any value in here. Ed Vandenberg, John Franco, Gary Pettis, Jose Guzman, Rick Rodin. So 87 tops, Dickie Thon, 89, Mike Heath, Don Slot, Gene Harris, Ray Sanchez, Alex Gonzalez, Derek Wilquist, Bob Nepper. Um, let's see, Spike Owen, Mike Bordick, Jeff Montgomery, Pat Burrell. Mike O'Connor, Jeff Robinson, Mike Sharperson, Nikki Tattleton. Yeah, there's some really bad cards in here. The only hope is that there's something decent in the pack. John Vukovic. I think this is a Burger King card. Yep. Actually, this is pretty cool. So far, I don't see my Hall of Famer that they promised. Ron Hassey, Danny Jackson, unless they're counting Roger Clemens. Fred Lynn, another Fred Lynn. Who's that? Moises Alou. Mike Maddox. Matt Williams. Eric Davis. Paul O'Neill. I like that because I'm a big Paul O'Neill guy, and I don't think I have that one. John Stearns. All right, so here's our Hall of Famer, Ryan Sandberg. Eric Davis, two of those. Another Roger Clemens. Benito Santiago. Mark McGuire. Captain Steroid. Juan Gon, another steroid guy. J.R. Richard, Burger King, that's cool. Ready? Mark McGuire. What is this? Classic. What year? Um. K. 
can't tell what year this is. I wonder if it's um, right around the time of his Olympic card. I'll have to look that up. That may be an interesting card. Placido Polanco, Dwight Smith, Jimmy Rollins, Danny Hawking, The Gator, Ron Guidry, Mickey Mordini, Greg Walker, Rob Murphy. Um, all right. And Jock Peterson, uh, maybe his rookie, I'm not sure. I'll have to look that up. All right. Opening these cards takes up most of the time. So we're opening up this pack of 1993 Opeachy. They're a Canadian company, I believe. All right. Nolan Ryan. That's kind of cool. Star performers. Steve Cook. David Cohn as a member of the Royals. Norm Charlton, Vinny Castilla, Milt Thompson, Ellis Burks. Checklist. Everybody loves getting the checklists. And Mike Hartley. All right. And then 2018 Series 1. I'm not up on the, you know, the current stuff. I don't know what rookies are in the sets. There's a Giancarlo Stanton. Boy, he was a disappointment this year. Andrelton Simmons. Jonathan Villar. Washington Nationals. World Series. Garbage. Chris Davis, opening day. Bryce Harper. Boy, he didn't have a really good year. Chris Davis. Johan Moncada. Javier Baez and Ivan Nova. All right, so that was that. And then I had to go to Walgreens the other day, and uh, I picked this box up. This was six bucks. Um, one in four, it says, uh, has a hit, which is either an autograph or a relic. Um, so it has a hundred total cards. And, uh, let's see, one manufactory sealed pack. One in four packages on average include a hit. Hit may include game used card, event used card, manufactured autograph or relic cards. All right. So let's see. How we do with this? Do we do any better? So far, the best card I got was the Paul O'Neill. That's just for me. All right. Edwin Encarnacion. The Yankees did not resign him. Paul Mahome. Jason Giambi. Mark Giamatti, Hugh Darvish, I don't know who this guy is, another Jared Weaver card, Darren Ruff, all right. So far, no hit. Damon Berryhill, Jesse Barfield, Randy Reddy, Jeff Shaw, Robin Ventura, nineties garbage, Kurt Schilling. Not even some rookies that are worth holding on to. Oral Hershiser. Greg Olson, Mike Flanagan, Steve Michelle, Ken Patterson. Here's a Cal Ripken. Mickey Tettleton, Steve Searcy. 
1990 score. Oh, Christ. All right, well, what are you going to do? It's just six bucks. It's not like I spent a million dollars on he on these. Uh, Shane Victorino. John Jay. Dexter Fowler. David DeJesus. Dallas Braden. Rafael Palmero. Barry Lyons. All right, last little bit. I must have had the uh, the one of the packs that did not have a hit. David Cohn, Jose Gonzalez, Real Cormier, Willie McGee, Rob Ducey. Boo. 1990s. All right. Well, every which way. I was actually looking forward to opening these. I was hoping I was going to get something pretty cool, but uh, nope, wasn't meant to be. And the pack of 1990 score. I don't think there's anything of any. Significance in 1990 score. Though they were very colorful cards. Caminetti's rookie. Jeff Jackson, Bob Melvin, Kevin Romine. His son plays with the Yankees. Kerry Francona, current manager. Gary Carter, Hall of Famer. Billy Buckner, Charles Nagy, rookie, Chris Hammond, rookie, Larry Walker, rookie. That's kind of cool. All right, guys, that's it. Thanks for hanging in there for 27 minutes. Uh, most of it was just a waste of time, I think. Uh, but I do appreciate you guys watching, and uh, take care. Bye for now.